Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. We're gonna give folks just another minute to get on into the meeting before we get started. Go ahead and turn off your video while we're waiting. And Christina, if you could turn everybody's video and mute all, turn off everybody's video and mute everyone. Cool, looks like we're ready to start and we are recording. Good evening and welcome to our public meeting to review the draft Sonoma County Community Wildfire Protection Plan or CWPP. My name is Tracy Cattleman and I'll be facilitating tonight's meeting on behalf of Permit Sonoma and Digital Mapping Solutions. Thank you for joining us tonight and contributing your time to help prepare where you live for wildfire. Tonight, we're here to share what we've been doing this past year to create the draft CWPP or Community Wildfire Protection Plan. This meeting is targeted for residents in Sonoma County's first supervisorial district, although everyone is welcome. Tonight's process will work best from your computer versus the phone, so if you're able to, please join us via your computer. We're recording tonight's meeting and it will be available soon via the Permit Sonoma YouTube channel, where it will also have closed captioning. And Christina just put that link in the chat. You can also check out the recordings from the meetings we've already had. Christina's gotten them up there very quickly. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce Carolyn Safford from Permit Sonoma to introduce some of our partners with us tonight. If you've been working in fire and especially community wildfire preparedness in Sonoma County, you've likely worked with Carolyn. She's been leading this effort for decades, including as a principal author of the original 2016 CWPP, and she's spearheading this CWPP update process for the county. Welcome, Carolyn. Go ahead and unmute and turn on your video. Good evening, everybody, and thank you all so much for joining. Um, we really appreciate your um, input into the CWPP as, we'll, um, as we move forward. Um, I just wanted to really send extra thanks out to all of our fire folk who have joined us tonight. Um, ben Nichols is here from Cal Fire, um, as are Cindy Foreman and Jim Bogari from the uh, Sonoma County Fire District, um, Trevor Smith and Gary Johnson, both from Sonoma Valley Fire District, Paul Lowenthal from Santa Rosa Fire. Um, and if I missed any of you, I hope not. And I just wanted you to know, everybody out there, that um, your fire officials are with us. They've been working with us since we've been um, working on the plan, and you will have a chance to um, ask them questions and hear their thoughts in the breakout rooms. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. So uh, first, just a few Zoom basics. Please be sure, and um, we'll have the next slide, Esther. Please be sure you're muted and to turn off your video. And if you're not familiar with Zoom, you can send direct chat messages to our team via the chat icon on your toolbar, which is likely on the bottom of your screen in the middle. If you need subtitles, you can enable live transcription on the bottom right of your screen by clicking on the live transcript icon, then select show subtitle. Bienvenidos a nuestros vecinos quienes prefieren hablar en español. Perdono, pero no tenemos interpretación hoy. Si necesita ayuda en español, por favor, mándanos un mensaje por chat. Next slide. So Zoom provides a couple of options for your audio. If you don't have a great internet connection or having a hard time hearing us, click on the up arrow next to the audio icon, which is below the microphone at the bottom left of your screen. From there, you can choose to switch to phone audio and follow the instructions to link your audio and video or computer connection. If you have any other questions or issues using Zoom, please send Christina Smith a message in the chat. Next slide. So we'll be having up to three breakout rooms later in the meeting to give you time to ask questions specific to where you live and or to dive deeper on anything we present tonight. We'll also have some presentations from some of the fire folks that Carolyn just um, mentioned who are here with us tonight. If you could, um, in a moment here, take a moment to answer the poll that Christina will share with us to let us know in which breakout room you'd like to participate tonight, that would be helpful. Go ahead, Christina, and please share that poll. So if you can just select which of those, that'll give us a sense of how many people we need to plan for in each of the breakouts. Those options are for North, Central, and the South areas of District 1. And on the screen, you can see the north area is Northeast Santa Rosa, Upper Mark West Springs, Bennett Mountain, not Bennett Valley, Oakmont, Kenwood, 
Hood Mountain Regional Park and Sugarloaf Ridge State Park. For the central breakout is Glen Ellen, Jack London State Historic Park, and the southern part of the Mayacamas Mountains. And finally, for District 1 South, it's the El Verano, the city of Sonoma, and the southern Sonoma Mountains. So we're going to just go ahead and leave that poll up for a few minutes while people select where they want to go to. Um, if you're here from another district, please choose the area of most interest to you and um, also try to join us for the meeting in your district next week. We'll be having meetings for districts four and five. So thanks for answering that poll and helping us. And um, Christina, whenever you're comfortable, you can close it and we can leave it up for a while. So next slide. Tonight's meeting is designed to share with you the draft Sonoma County Community Wildfire Protection Plan or CWPP to encourage your input. We wanna hear from you as this is a community wildfire protection plan. In other words, our purpose is to engage Sonoma County residents in the review of the public draft of the Sonoma County CWPP and its meaningful implementation. Next slide. In terms of our outcomes or what we expect us all to leave this meeting with tonight, our intention is that Sonoma County residents will have a general understanding of what the CWPP includes, who is leading the process and how it can be used, the findings of the CWPP and related wildfire risk assessments, the CWPP proposed priority projects and how to include future projects in the process. And next slide. And how to submit comments on the public review draft CWPP and that we hope you leave here empowered to do that. And finally, we as a CWPP team will receive initial feedback from you on the draft CWPP. Next slide. So finally, this is our agenda for tonight. We'll start with a quick overview of how we got here today, followed by a brief presentation by your county supervisor, Susan Gorin. We'll then provide a series of short presentations about the risk assessment we developed for the CWPP and the process to identify priority projects. We'll then move into breakout room listening sessions regarding the projects for this district and show you how to submit additional projects. This is also an opportunity for you to provide comments on the CWPP and ask any relevant questions that come up for you tonight. Finally, we'll come back together to explain in more detail how you can provide comments on the CWPP by February 28th, and then we will close the meeting by 730. We will stick around another 15 minutes or so after that in our virtual parking lot to answer any final questions anyone might have following the meeting. We know that there are many of you with us tonight, especially in this district, who have suffered enormously over the last five years from the profound losses due to wildfire. All of us here want to acknowledge your losses and thank you for your strength in coming tonight to collaborate towards finding ways to live with fire in Sonoma County. We're now going to move into the presentations for the evening. We'll begin with a presentation by Carolyn Safford from Permit Sonoma. Carolyn will share briefly with you the background and history to get us to this draft CWPP. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so the overall purpose of a community welfare protection plan is simply to bring together all of the um, residents, agencies, groups um, who live in or work in the Wildland Urban Interface, or WUI, as we usually call it, bring us all together in one place to collaboratively identify wildfire issues, risks, and then to prioritize areas and strategies that we can use to reduce those risks across the landscape. The idea for the Community Wildfire Protection Plan originally came out of the Healthy Forest Restoration Act from Congress in 2003 and is only asking us to be collaborative, have a risk assessment, and talk about structure hardening. Those are the only requirements from the federals. But the, the basics of why this, what, what we want this document to do for us in the county are, are right here on this slide. This is an update from the 2016 CWPP. Next slide. Surprise, um, which um, has gotten updates on a, on, a, on a lot of different fronts, and we'll be having a look at that as we move forward. Um, how we um, did this update was we have we held um, public 
meetings in five supervisory districts. A lot of the people who are here tonight were at those first meetings as well, wherein we solicited your ideas on what you thought the issues were. And um, we took all of those ideas and have put them into the draft. We have a steering committee who we have worked with to get their input into the draft as we've created it and have done ongoing um, outreach, especially with the help of Fire Save Sonoma, who's been um, great in helping us keep the word out and keep people engaged in the process. Next. Um, some of the things that we've updated um, in the plan, we still have what you'd call a print version, which mostly exists as, a, um, as an Adobe Acrobat PDF now. A lot of new information in there. Um, the 2016 plan, of course, became almost irrelevant within a year of being published because everything changed. And a lot of the changes that we're, we're, we, we have put into this update are our attempt to make sure that the CWPP represents the conditions which have existed since the 2017 fires. Um, so we have a lot of changes in the print version. We'll be talking more about that. Um, but even more exciting is this interactive um, story map and hub site, which is where all the really cool stuff lives. This is where all the maps are. There's a lot of information in there, a lot of videos, links to all of the local CWPPs that have been created throughout, throughout the county. Those are all um, part of the appendices of this plan. So all of that stuff lives on the, um, on the hub site and will be um, updated and um, looked at throughout the next five years, which is the period before which we have to revise once again the, the countywide CWPP. Next slide. So, the CWPP serves as a comprehensive resource to help residents understand risks, both through things like the wildfire uh, risk index, which Esther will be talking about later, um, they're also through the educational materials that are provided on the hub site and in, in the document itself. And then to undertake wildfire risk reduction strategies on both private and public lands by hardening structures, reducing flammable vegetation in residential, near home and wildland areas um, that will both reduce fire intensity and hopefully increase uh, natural services that our wildland areas provide us and how to prepare for emergency and be ready for it. Um, and it's really a tool to encourage that collaboration between residents, groups, agencies across the county so we can all be in this together, which we really need to be. Next. One of the coolest things that um, came out of this was Esther and her team um, created a, a, a risk index for the county, which is based on the hazard index, which we created for the um, multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan. She'll be talking a lot about that, but I really want to call out right now my favorite fun tool to play with on the site, which is the Sonoma County WRI statistic tool. So once you're on the hub site, you can click onto that this is a map that will let you draw a little polygon, and then you can see everything that you need to know in that polygon. What's the percentage of risk? How many houses are there? What's the population? What percentage of seniors? What? It's an awesome, awesome tool, especially for project planning, and I just wanted to call that out a little bit, but we'll be talking a lot more about that later. Next. So the CWPP itself, we really wanted it to fit on the back of an envelope. That would have been perfect. But it's 90 pages long, oh, plus 300 pages of appendices. So it's long. And um, 90 pages, a little long, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty good reading. I really enjoy it. I, and so I'd really encourage you to take a look at it, read it if you haven't done so yet. Um, if you want to bite off little bites, um, start with the executive summary, and that will give you a good idea of where you want to go from there. Um, chapter 2 addresses demographics, what are the values at risk, land use, infrastructure, stuff like that, where are those in the county. Chapter 3 is all about fire and fire ecology and um, consequences of suppression and all kinds of stuff like that. So you can learn a lot about fire in 3. Um, the wildfire assessment is discussed in depth in Chapter 4. And um, recommendations for key activities. This is a really good place to take a look to see these are the recommendations that we got from both communities and from agencies about what it is that we need to do to circle up the wildland 
problem in Sonoma County and learn to live in an environment that is increasingly going to be characterized by uh, large damaging wildfires. The appendices contain much um, detailed documentation for all kinds of stuff um, which su supplement the CWPP. You can find extensive information about how to do CEQA and what's required and um, uh, fire agencies, all kinds of stuff. So uh, the appendices are great and that's all in there, but start with the um, executive summary and then go where you want to go, but do read it. And I think once you start reading it, you'll keep reading it because it's pretty cool. Next. Um, very important. Um, this is a community welfare protection plan. That means this is your CWPP. And um, if you don't tell us your thoughts, we don't know your thoughts. So I really, really, really want to encourage folks to dive in to the CWPP on our website, which we'll show you in a while, and make those comments. Make sure we know what you think. Um, this is a living document. We really are going to strive to keep it alive over the next five years. Um, with your participation, we'll be updating projects in our project list, adding pertinent new information as it's developed. There's a bunch of new mapping tools being developed that we want to make sure get linked to through the appendices. Um, and through the hub site. So we really want to keep it alive, and again, that is a participatory endeavor. Next. Um, public comments on the draft are due by February 28th. Um, so after that, we're going to um, incorporate comments and get it ready to um, have it finally signed off. So you must have your comments to us by February 8th. And if you come up with new projects that you want to put it into our project tool, those also have to be entered by the 28th. So that's important to remember into February. Um, once the final document is ready, we're going to present it to the board and the other signatories um, during Wildfire Prevention Week, May 3rd of 2022. Um, and after it's signed, we're going to work on annexing the CWPP into the multi-jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan. Um, which will really help us to make sure that we're in alignment for federal funding for um, projects in the future. And then we'll continue the maintenance and project review, as I mentioned before. Next. That was it for me. We're lucky enough now. Thanks, for Supervisor Leo. Gorin. Yes, we will now hear a brief presentation from your county supervisor, Susan Gorin, regarding wildfire and preparedness in the first district. Welcome, Supervisor Gorin. Please go ahead and turn on your video and unmute. The floor is yours. Well, um, thank you, Carol Leon, for your incredible introduction. And a huge thank you to you and all of the staff at Permit Sonoma for your work on this. You probably recall when I met you at Monin's Rill uh, before the 2017 fires, when you were working with that intentional community on developing a CWPP uh, to help them prioritize vegetation management projects. And I think they worked uh, to their advantage to, uh, to move forward on some of those projects. Tragically, we know that the glass fire overwhelmed them even with their preparations. I want to thank all of you for being with us tonight. Uh, thank you for spending a couple, uh, an hour and a half with us to learn what a CWPP is and how it will benefit you and how it's going to move through the uh, approval process uh, in the future. This beautiful district has seen more than its share of devastating fires since I've been in office. And of course, you know that I know firsthand experience how Difficult it is to be a fire survivor, move through recovery, and yet still uh, know and work with the community in preparing myself, my neighbors, and my district and community for the for action in the future. It brought up uh, 2017, brought us Tubbs, Nuns Fire, and all of the other fires in Sonoma Valley that merged together. It destroyed thousands of homes, including my own. In 2020, we saw the glass fire come through again, ripping through the northern and central part of the district and leading to more destruction. And the wall bridge and the, fire and the, and the Myers fire were part of that as well. Fire has always existed here, but with climate change, we are facing drier conditions, 
longer fire seasons and erratic weather patterns. They're burning hotter and moving faster with regularity, a wind-driven mega wildfire like we've seen in recent years was unheard of here a decade ago. And you probably paid attention to the news as the wildfire burned and destroyed hundreds of homes near Boulder, Colorado in December. Usually they have snow all over the ground, but even in that time, uh, they were subject to devastating fires. Coupled with increasing population, having more folks living up in these beautiful hills and valleys increases our risk, risk significantly. And this isn't just happening in Sonoma County. Our state and the Western US in general has been seeing record fires over the last few years witness the fire in Boulder. But we don't need to let this overwhelm us. Uh, please um, find, uh, find your fortitude, find your determination, and move yourself and your neighbors and your community to action. We can allow our past experiences to galvanize, galvanize us and to motivate us to act and prepare and to advocate. It takes a village. It takes all of us thinking about what we can do at the individual level, the neighborhood level, the district level, and of course the whole county and beyond. Home hardening, vegetation management, grazing, removing fire prone vegetation like juniper or eucalyptus, forest management, wildfire cameras, shaded fuel breaks, creating neighborhood fire safe councils. This is not an either or situation. This is an all of the above situation. And tonight's meeting is an important tool, important part of that. Back in April, we gathered together in a similar way to hear from you about what resources you have in your community and what vulnerabilities to help inform the development of the countywide document. Tonight is your opportunity to review the draft CWPP. Some of you might be members of a fire safe council fire department, or COPE group, but I would argue that we have much more knowledge about wildfire risks and what needs to happen to help keep all of us safer than we did in 2016. Our CWPP here outlines where we've been with fire behavior, where we are in Sonoma County with regard to fire preparedness, and make some recommendations for concrete investments that will help us be better prepared than ever. This process will set us up to be very competitive for private, state, and federal funding to address our priorities. We are all in this together, and I'm so glad we have you with us tonight. Wildfire, sadly, is not going away, so it's up to us to adapt and keep each other safe and prepared for the fires of the future. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for all of the folks uh, with the staff that are working on this presentation tonight. Thank you so much, Supervisor Gorin, for your heartfelt words this evening and setting the stage for why this CWPP is such an important public process for all Sonoma County residents. We very much appreciate you joining us and inspiring tonight, inspiring us tonight. Jumping into tonight's review of the CWPP findings, if you've participated in any of our process up to now, including via the online hub site and story maps that um, Carleon mentioned earlier, you've probably heard us talk about the risk assessment. Esther Mendeno from the CWP Project Consultant Lead Team Member from Digital Mapping Solutions will now introduce the results from the risk assessment process she led. Welcome, Esther. Thank you, Tracy, and hello, everyone. My name is Petronila Esther Mandeno, but you can call me Esther. Today, I'm going to quickly review some of the content we have online that explains our wildfire risk index, as well as some of the tools we have that allow you to explore that index. Then I'll present some general results. We will start at the Sonoma County CWPP hub site. You can access the hub site directly from the main CWPP website by clicking on the big go button. 
Once there, you can read through our text that explains a little bit about the project and define some terms. Scrolling down, we come to our maps and tools. The very first image card is our Sonoma County CWPP project list. The second is the Sonoma County Wildfire Hazard Index. And the third is the Sonoma County Wildfire Risk Index, or WRI. Then we have our community base map with a lot of the baseline data we use in the CWPP. There's also the Sonoma County WRI statistics tool. And the next card is a map I put together overlaying fire history on top of our calculated WRI. There are a few more maps and tools up there, but for now we'll click on the Sonoma County WRI statistics card to view it. This map is a web application that allows you to explore the wildfire risk index in detail. You can use this tool to generate statistics and data to help you in submitting a project into our CWPP project ranking tool. Or you can use it to develop your projects in general or to get information you may need for a grant application or report. The welcome splash, the welcome splash page has some important information you should take the time to read. These maps and tools will remain online so you can explore them anytime and for as long as you need. For now, I want to go through a summary of the results of the WRI for Sonoma County. On this slide, titled Sonoma County Statistics, I showed the average wildfire risk index for Sonoma County, which is three or high on our scale. Remember, we are using a scale of one to five, one being low and five being extreme. Incidentally, the average wildfire hazard index and average ember load index for all of Sonoma County is also high. The average road index, which has a similar scale as the other indices, but reversed, is four or very poor. For the CAL FIRE fire hazard severity zones, I didn't average those values because it's not spatially distributed across the county like our indices are. But the values range from low to high in the state responsibility areas and very high in the local responsibility areas. Finally, we estimated over 200,000 structures in the county with an estimated population of around 490,000. Roughly 187,000 parcels in the county are impacted, which is just about all of them. In the next few slides, I want to show how the data in the WRI can be used to highlight areas of concern in the county. This slide shows the highest WRI that would be um, any area with a WRI of five. And the areas with the highest WRI are highlighted in Scion on the map and include places high up in the Maya Camas Mountains in the northeastern portion of the county, as well as areas surrounding Cloverdale. Just east of Santa Rosa is a large area of concern, as well as, well as the surrounding area around um, Sonoma Mountain and north and east of the town of Sonoma. West of Highway 1, we have scattered areas north of the Russian River that scored high for wildfire risk, as well as areas just south and west of Petaluma. This next slide looks very similar to the last one, but there's a subtle difference. And instead of just highlighting the areas with the highest risk index, I also selected for the poorest road access. Many of the same areas are highlighted, but a few were removed, particularly around cities which have better road access. This map is an example of how the WRI can be used to focus on areas or communities that are at highest risk and that have the worst road access according to our assessment. I won't read through all the areas listed on this slide, but remember you can explore the WRI in depth anytime using our online tools. This next slide is another example of how the WRI can be refined by selecting for both the highest risk index and the highest ember load index. Again, the areas sh shown are similar to the other maps, but we are homing in on the areas most at risk to extensive ember loads in the event of a fire. Places in the Maya Camas Mountains, like Black Oat, Big Sulphur Creek, and the lower portion of Mount St. Helena. North of Guerneville, areas surrounding Cazadero, 
Goat Rock, which is an area near Bear Pen Creek and not the Goat Rock over on the coast. Moorheart Ridge, Ward Creek, northwest of Pole Mountain, north of Rio Nido, northwest of Monte Rio, and finally south and east of Petaluma. That's all the time I have right now to uh, go through what we learned through the CWPP risk assessment, but I'll be available for, available for questions throughout this meeting and in the next few minutes. Thank you, Esther, for sharing about the risk assessment and the wildfire risk index. And we've got those links in the chat for those of you who want to check it out now or later. We have a few minutes now for questions and answers about the risk assessment and the results. To send us a written question, please use the chat function via the chat icon on your screen there. Um, please send your questions to me, Tracy Cattleman, via chat. You can also raise your hand to ask your questions live. To raise your hand, go to the reactions icon on your Zoom window and then select raise hand and wait for me to call on you to unmute. So any questions so far on what uh, Esther has presented from the risk, the risk assessment and the wildfire risk index? We'll give you all a moment to think about that and see if you have any questions. And of course, as Esther mentioned, you know the splash screens and also um, within the story maps that are on the hub site, there are a lot of instructions on how to use them, including some uh, videos. Uh, there's a question from Jason Mills. What is used to determine, quote, ember load, Esther? You'll need to unmute. Yeah, <laughs> I just realized that. Got to unmute myself. So the Ember load data came directly from PyroLogic. So they did a statewide um, analysis for CAL FIRE. Um, they took land fire data and updated it. I think at the time it was either updated to 2020 on the ground conditions. It might be 2019, but I, I, I want to say it's 2020 um, ground conditions. And you know, they did a basic hazard um, and risk analysis with the data and, um, but they took uh, it a step further and they determined where embers were produced and where they were likely to land. And so we, we used that, uh, where the embers are likely to land data to, uh, to add to our, our risk um, index to um, complement the data that we have which was just um, uh, a predicted fire behavior, which in, in this case, we just used flame length. Thank you. And the next question is related to that. Do these risk numbers reflect current conditions post glass fire and post hubs nuns? I think the PyroLogix data is 2020. Yeah, so the PyroLogix data does reflect 2020 conditions. So that would be prior to the glass because it would, at the beginning of the 2020 year. And then um, the fuel model layer that we used was developed back in 2017, I believe. Um, so we updated it for post tubs condition, but not post Kincaid or post uh, you know, Wallbridge and Myers or Glass. But but that is that is, I agree, that is something that that needs to be done but it won't happen in this version, I'm sorry. And as Tom Connect from Cal Fire LNU says, just wait five years and it'll all be different. Yeah, <laughs> or, or, the, or back to the same what it was before, yeah. yeah. So it still gives a pretty good um, snapshot of where we are today. Um, a couple more questions, one from Bruce Flynn. What is the difference between the criteria used to develop the wildfire risk index and the Cal Fire risk map? Yeah, they're very different because um, they use different data sources. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to develop our own is because the uh, fuel model layer that we use is based on an, a fine scale vegetation map that was developed for, um, well, they call it the Sonoma Veg Map. It, uh, it was the Sonoma County o Agriculture and Open Space District. They did, did a big project trying to get an updated vegetation layer for the entire county that was seamless across the county. And um, so we wanted to take advantage of that and create a fuel model layer from that. And so with that data coupled with, a, you know, a few other landscape 
level uh, layers, you know, like canopy cover, canopy base height, canopy bolt density. Um, we wanted to update the fire behavior modeling because the last time CAL FIRE, or the, if you're referring to the uh, CAL FIRE's fire hazard severity zones, that was last updated in 2007, I believe. But I do, but I am aware that, you know, CAL FIRE is trying to update update that and that's like eminent like any day now so there'll be two different ones hopefully they agree they usually do or they roughly agree but you know it's, it's that whole spatial resolution will be different so um, ours is based on five meter data resolution and so I'm, I'm not too sure what the latest cal fire data will be um, what the resolution of that data will be thank you the next question from Scott Kincaid, is there a map overlay of population in the three to five risk areas, I assume the higher risk areas? Roads would suggest people also spread potential to lower risk level areas, obviously based on several factors. Yeah, we did not include population in the uh, wildfire risk index. We were, we were going to, um, but how we were wanted to value those numbers um, <clears throat> we disagreed on. So like I felt, or just as an example, this is, I mean, it, nothing's right or wrong, right? It's just, um, just a difference of opinion. Um, I felt that um, lower population areas were, are more at risk, right? Because they're likely to be in the wooey. But as we saw with Coffee, Coffee Park, you know, really dense areas could be really high at risk. So it was hard to give, you know, it would have end up be, being that anywhere where there's population is really high value, right? So it, um, it wasn't distinguishing anything on the landscape. So, so we didn't add it um, to the Wi-Fi risk index, but I do have the population data um, uploaded onto that statistical tool. So you can do a query if, if I showed you how, <laughs> or, or it, there is a way to do a query so you can tease out um, high population areas or low or moderate, you know, you can, um, I have it divided out into um, population segments and then, um, and also the high, the high biohazard or areas. So you can, you can get that information. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a great reminder that the beauty of the hub site is that all the information is up there. So if anybody has GIS skills, you can go in and download you know, those assessments that Esther talked about and then download the population data and run your own analysis. So um, that's all there. Let's see, oh, one more question. Did the population use the 2020 census data? Yes, the data that's up there right now, it is. It's it's census data, right? And it's aggregated or it's, um, I, I, uh, I don't know the right term, but it, it's um, extrapolated to those 100 acre hex, hexagons that I used to cover the entire county. And so in some places it's not very accurate because the, the census um, track is either really large and has a really small number, right? Um, so it, it, it just doesn't compute very well. But in places where the tracks are small, um, it, it's fairly accurate. Cool, thanks Esther. Um, one last comment is I wanna mention that I just learned that FEMA has this wrapped data out there for those of you interested in population, especially equity issues, R-A-P-T. If you Google that on the FEMA site, it's got a whole lot of information census and equity and where hospitals are and all that kind of stuff. So if you like to geek out on that stuff, check out wrapped. So moving on, thank you, Esther. Part of this CWPP process is to identify a list of prioritized projects to reduce hazardous fuels and identify actions to reduce structural ignitability, meaning losing less homes and other buildings to fire. Caroleone introduced our project ranking tool earlier. Esther will now explain that tool in more detail. Please give Esther your attention again regarding party projects and recommendations in the draft CWPP and how to submit your projects. Go for it, Esther. Hello again. I'm going to go over how we handle the input that we received from you all. As you may know, last year we held five public meetings asking you about fire prevention and fuel mitigation projects you thought should be implemented in your neighborhood and Sonoma County. We summarized the input and used your project ideas 
to create our CWPP recommendations. The summary of projects from each meeting can be reviewed via the hub site meeting summaries. Let's go there now. Remember, you can access the hub site via the big go button from the main CWPP website, or you can use the URL that we'll copy into the chat box. You'll find the meeting summaries toward the bottom on the hub site. Just keep scrolling down and you can click on any of the map images and a PDF document will open containing the summary for that meeting. <clears throat> we also have the data summarized by an Excel sheet that we can provide upon request. Note that many of the project ideas submitted during our public meetings were just that, ideas. As great as they are, they are not fully developed projects ready for funding that we can add to our project list. So instead of listing these project ideas on our project list, the CWPP recommendations were developed with your project ideas in mind. Please review these carefully to make sure your project idea is reflected in one of those recommendations. You can find the recommendations in Chapter 5 of the draft CWPP. The CWPP recommendations are general actions that affect the entire county or could affect the entire county. For example, many concerned participants cited the need for improved road access and evacuation preparedness and education. <clears throat> so our recommendations for evacuation readiness within Sonoma County include developing targeted evacuation preparedness education materials for diverse populations, improving street and route signage throughout the county, and identifying evacuation routes to communities that are constrained by few or narrow routes. The project list in Appendix A of the CWPP contains all the fully developed projects submitted formally to us, either via email or the mapping tool we used last year. If you have a fully developed project that did not get on the list, either whether it's funded or seeking funding, we want to know about it. A fully developed project is one that has a targeted area identified with well-developed project goals, a description, timeline, and a preliminary budget. To submit your project so that it will be listed in the CWPP, we ask that you please use our project ranking tool, which can be accessed from the Sonoma County CW, CWPP project list page. It is the first image card you'll encounter on our hub site. And once there, you'll find the actual project list in a spreadsheet format. This is a read-only Google Sheet containing all the projects submitted to the Sonoma County CWPP. The first tab has all the projects listed in the order they were submitted. And the second tab explains how the point system works and how a first, second, or third priority is assigned based on those points and the overall project budget. Directly under the spreadsheet is a section containing links to the project ranking tool. Please read through the text we provided to help you fill out the form on the project ranking tool. The list of questions is provided as a separate PDF document that you can review on a separate browser tab. Clicking on the project ranking tool button will take you to a 10 page form. Yes, that's right, 10 pages. It will take you some time to fill this out. So again, please read through the text on the previous page to ensure you are ready to answer all the questions. The last section on the Sonoma County CWPP project list uh, webpage is a map of all the projects listed. From this map, you can click on any project submitted and get all the information entered for that project. Use this map to find out what specific what specific and detailed projects are planned in the vicinity of your area of interest. That's all the time I have right now. Remember, you have until February 28th to submit a project to be included in the 2022 CWPP, after which you can still submit a project using our online project ranking tool. However, anything submitted after February 28th will not be included in this version in the 2022 CWPP but it will um, be included after uh, review, next year's review. Thank you.
Thanks, Esther, for that introduction. Carol Leone will now explain the projects in more detail, including the projects proposed for this supervisorial district. Take it away, Carol Leone. Thank you, guys. So um, this um, District 1 has quite a few projects that are entered, which is great, because there's um, a lot more than really anybody else, which is awesome reflection of um, the community's willingness to move forward and um, create projects to reduce risk, which is great. Next slide. Um, here is where they specifically are. And again, you can pop back onto the hub site. And if you click on any of these projects, you can read specific information about the project and, and what it does. Um, there are a lot of them in the north part of the district. There is one in the south and in the central. We'll be working on that in the breakout room. Next slide. Um, this is really important. This project list is really important. And we really need your input into this project list. Um, because what we really lack in this county is a, a broad overview of what everybody is doing or wants to do in regards to um, projects throughout the county. And um, are there areas in the county that are underserved? Well, there are a lot of areas that don't have any projects listed. I know there are projects out there. Um, is there duplication? Are there a ton of projects in the same area that are effectively doing the same thing? Um, if there are, this gives us the opportunity to maybe increase collaboration, turn three small projects into one large project that might have a better chance for funding. Um, the open space district um, in their grant process this year, as any of you who are writing a, a, a project know, um, you do have to enter your project into the project ranking tool um, through that process. Um, so those will be populated into the map at some point. We're not sure exactly when. Um, but that will give us a good view of, of what's going on with them. But I can't encourage you enough um, to get all these projects in here. Um, what we're hoping to do is have collaborative meetings where we can, a whole group of people can look at all of this at one time and start to uh, really more effectively prioritize projects and areas. Next. Um, these regular meetings, um, which will be a combination of um, agency folks, Fire Safe Sonoma, hopefully some of the local Fire Safe Council members, um, uh, will work to collaboratively really look at project design and, and, and update the list with the new projects that are entered after the deadline on the 28th. We'll get a new raft in. And then we'll have to look at those and verify that they um, have checks in all the boxes. They have um, everything that we need to call it a real project. And we're hoping that Fire Safe Sonoma might take the lead in this, but we're still working on exactly what the uh, mechanics of how these meetings will take place will move. But this is a really, really important thing that I would really like to see move forward um, with a lot of inter interaction with everybody who's doing work. Next. So the ranking tool um, does provide a score for your project. And that score is based on the risk as identified in the wildfire risk index that um, Esther created for this project, as well as using CAL FIRE's fire hazard severity zone. So we're using both risk uh, databases at the same time. And then there's a lot that's on the nature of the project. How many of our identified um, priorities for treatment does this do? If you're doing a project that is only a shaded fuel break on a roadside, you'll get one check for that. If you're doing a shaded fuel break on a roadside, that also includes outreach check. If you're doing structure hardening, you get another check. Um, so the more um, elements you incorporate into your project, um, have you collaborated with your local agencies, who all is involved in it, all of those um, add up to increase the, uh, the ranking of your project. Um, you want to make sure and be realistic in your project design. Don't be tempted to say you'll do a bunch of stuff that you really can't do just to get a higher ranking score. Um, but that's how that ranking tool works. And um, we consider this to be a work in progress. Um, I think that especially after the open space district projects all get entered, um, we'll see places where we might want to tweak the tool a little bit. So your input is always welcome. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we desperately need this collaborative, large-scale look at what people want to do and are doing in our county. So again, um, go to the story map, to the hub site. Um, click on the box with the picture of the chipper, and that will take you to um, the tool. It's relatively, it's, it's um, on the one hand, it, it takes some time. Make sure you download the questions first, as Esther said, because you don't want to start the survey until you know the questions you want to answer. You'll need to use that statistical tool to figure out what percentage of your area is what is, uh, what's the risk rating, ranking um, average in your area. So you'll want to do some preliminary work. Um, but take a look at those questions. There are strict uh, data entry level um, limits on all your project descriptions and stuff. We want them to be very short and concise, which is going to be really difficult to do. I do understand that, but it really does sort of sharpen your focus on what exactly you're doing and how you're going to do it. Um, some people can get this done in a half an hour. Some people are taking a little longer to get them done. The mapping tool is actually really easy to use. That's a little intimidating to folks. But when you map, map your project area, it's really pretty easy to do. So I really recommend that you um, take a look at it and try to, uh, try to get your projects in. Next. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Carleon. Thanks for sharing with us about how to get your project submitted by February 28th so you can be part of this process even more than this evening. So we're now going to move next into our breakout room listening sessions where you'll have an opportunity to provide comments or ask questions on what was presented tonight, including the risk assessment and the priority projects for your community and district. For those of you who have already begun your review of the draft CWPP or completed it, we welcome you to share with us any initial feedback you have on this public draft. So as we discussed at the beginning of tonight's meeting and via the poll we shared with you earlier, we'll be breaking into three groups tonight for the North, Central, and South areas of District 1. Our breakout rooms are divided by the planning divisions that we created for these workshops based on population centers and ecosystem types. In other words, where vegetation may react differently to fire. So please decide which room you'd like to join. And those communities, you know, I mentioned before, the north is um, Northeast Santa Rosa, Mark West, Bennett, Oakmont, Kenwood, Sugarloaf, et cetera, Central, Glen Ellen, Jack London State Park, Mayacamas, and the south, El Verano, um, City of Sonoma, and the southern Sonoma Mountains. Roberta McIntyre from Fire Safe Sonoma will be facilitating the north group, Carolyn Sapper, the central, and Esther Mendino, the south. I have the next slide. Before we move into the breakout rooms, we have some ground rules we'd like you to abide by tonight so we can have an effective and respectful process. Those are that this is an opportunity to share your ideas, opinions, and questions. Everyone has an equal voice and respect others' ideas and opinions. If anyone cannot abide by these ground rules tonight, please let us know in the chat. Next slide. So this slide shows you how to use the breakout rooms and where to find the relevant icons. Use the breakout rooms icon at the bottom of your screen. It looks like four squares to select, change, or leave the breakout rooms. So once you decide which breakout room you'd like to join, please select that breakout room to join it, north, central, or south. Um, if you need help getting into your breakout room after we launch them, then please send Christina Smith a chat message and she can help you out. Once you enter the breakout room, please wait for your room facilitator to begin. Feel free to turn on your video once you join those rooms, but keep yourself muted until you're ready to speak. Next slide. If you're on a mobile device, the breakout icon is usually on the left side near the top of your screen as shown in this slide. As I mentioned, this process can be easier from a computer. So next slide. So back to the map. Um, in a moment, not quite yet, we're gonna launch the breakout rooms and help everyone get moved into them. Again, if you need help, I'll let Christina know, I could probably help you as well into North, Central, or South. So um, you're going to get on your screen a message that says, join a breakout room, and you can go ahead and pick which one. So, and we're going to have about 20 minutes um, to for that discussion in the breakout rooms. The way it's going to work is uh, Roberta, Carleon, or Esther will open the conversation. The local fire folks who are in the room are going to 
talk a little bit about their experience in your district or your part of the district and, and projects for the CWPP. Um, and then we'll open it up for comments, questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we have the list, if you participated in our public input meetings last April, we also have those if you'd like to review any of those projects that were submitted last year. Um, if you have comments for all the districts, um, you can move through the rooms and you can also, um, at, after we leave the breakout rooms, we're gonna talk about the process and how to submit your overall comments into this process. So with that, let's give it a try. Go ahead and Christina and please launch the breakouts. Cool. Well, thanks you guys for that, for um, going into those breakout rooms. I got to float through them and it sounded like there were some great conversations. So thank you for your participation in our process so far tonight. Um, speaking of our process, Christina Smith from Permit Sonoma is now going to explain the process to complete the CWPP and how you can submit your comments on the draft CWPP through February 28th. So please give Christina your attention and welcome. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to wait till that slide comes up. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so as Tracy said, I'll be, go, being going, sorry, I'll be going over the CWPP review and uh, signing process. Um, so I'll, after tonight's meeting, we have two more meetings with two other supervisor districts. Next week, we're meeting with districts four and five on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and then after those meetings, uh, we have the comment period open uh, for all of you to please comment on the draft by February 28th. That way we're able to incorporate them into the new draft and we'll send it over to our, oh, sorry, next slide, I should say, um, before I get on to what's going to happen after we ask you to comment. I'm going to teach you how to comment. <laughs> um, so first, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the CWPP project website, which on the Permit Sonoma website. Um, and then Tracy can add that on to the chat if she wants. Uh, and then you're going to click on the CWPP draft. Um, it's in big bold letters in that greenish yellowish box. Once you click that, it'll take you to the actual draft. And on the right side, it's gonna have a comment box. It'll say add a comment. You click on that and then add a comment disappears and you're gonna see another box up here um, asking you to either sign into Adobe Cloud if you have that, or if you don't and you don't wanna sign up for Adobe Cloud, you can do it as a guest. You would just enter in your name or your initials and continue as guest. Next slide. If you don't wanna do any of that and would rather take the time to download the uh, CWPP, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, just on the top right corner above the open in Acrobat box, there's a arrow pointing down. Click that and you're able to download. You can also send us your comments through email um, just by going to permit or sending us an email at permit Sonoma dash wildfire plan at Sonoma count dash Sonoma dash county.org. Sorry, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Next slide. After we collect all of your comments, uh, we'll be taking it to the steering committee for final review um, at the uh, end of February or end of February, beginning of March. Um, and then we'll present, present it to the board of supervisors and other signatories um, in May during wildfire prevention week, which we're kind of excited about because it's CWPP for wildfire prevention. Um, and then after all that said and done, we'll be incorporating it into the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. Next slide. And that's it. Thank you, Christina. Does anyone have any questions on how to submit your comments through the cloud or download the PDF or email your comments to us um, or questions about the process that we'll be using to complete the CWPP if so? Christina and others are available to answer those. Um, go okay. ahead and send me a chat or raise your hand. Send a chat to me, Tracy Cattleman, or raise your hand through the reactions icon down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I don't think I have a reactions icon on my screen. Go for it, Gary. 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so it, just briefly, say I want to, as soon as you're off, I want to go and submit a comment. Tell me exactly what to do. Go to which website to, to get this to submit a comment. Christina, you'll need to unmute. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, not a problem, Gary. So uh, I believe Tracy put in the chat the link to the uh, draft. Uh, or you can you know, type in the one that you see right here on the screen. It'll take you to the draft. Okay. And on the right panel, it'll say add a comment. Um, it's that, uh, the, yeah, there you go. Uh, Tracy's like, or Esther's circling it right now. Okay. Uh, you'll click that and then you put your name or your initials, um, depending on the level and anonymity you want, and okay. you'll continue as guest. Once you've done that, you can go anywhere in the document and just comment. You don't have to put in your initials or your name again. Okay, thank you. Could you put that link back, please, if just for a second, and I'm going to write it down. Sure. One just before this, like, this one here. That's and I'm going to put it back in the chat for you. HTTP. And um, just so everyone is aware, if you are commenting through the Adobe Cloud and starting in with your name, then anybody who opens the document and comments will see your comments. So if you want to be anonymous, do it as a guest. If you want to be part of an open and transparent public process, please use your name. And I was just going to throw in really quick, too, that the easy way to do this is just Google Sonoma CWPP. It'll take you right to our website, and the link to um, the review draft is right up at the top of the web page. So even if you don't have this URL all copied down correctly, just Google Sonoma CWPP. It'll take you to Permit Sonoma's website, and it's pretty easy from there. And I just put that link in the chat as well but we didn't have the HTTPS, so it didn't come up as blue, but you can copy and paste that into your browser. Other questions, comments? So again, you have through February 28th to submit your comments through the cloud or by sending us an email and also to get projects into the story map to be included in the CWPP. You can then continue to submit projects into the story map that will be part of an annual review, but they won't be part of the CWPP. And um, as Esther mentioned, the hub site will be up there indefinitely as a living, basically living CWPP. So y'all can download data, look at information, all that kind of stuff. Any other comments or questions? Just a real quick one about how many people were attended tonight's meeting? I can't tell. It was over 30. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for it too. Appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you all for your feedback. We appreciate everyone taking the time tonight to work with us on completing the CWPP. So Sonoma County has a community wildfire protection plan that is created and led by you, the dedicated residents of Sonoma County. Please let your friends, family, and colleagues know that they can continue to participate in this process through February 28th, and that they can get more information via the links on this slide and in the chat. You can also email us directly via the email on the slide and in the chat, and I'm gonna read these links right now. Um, the Permit Sonoma CWPP website, where everything is linked to, is https colon forward slash forward slash sonomacounty.ca.gov forward slash PRMD forward slash fire dash prevention forward slash community dash wildfire dash protection dash plan forward slash. Again, that's the one stop shop for all the information. The hub site with all the data and the cool story maps and you can download all the local CWPPs. You can see the notes from the meetings we did last year, you'll be able to see the notes and links to the videos for the meetings that we're doing right now in January is uh, https colon forward slash forward slash arcg.is forward slash mzc4l0. And then the CWPP draft in the Adobe Cloud to be able to add your comments online or download the document. It's https colon forward slash forward slash adobe.ly forward slash 
3PWGUAU. And finally, the CWPP project email to send us your comments or questions is permit sonoma wildfireplan at sonoma county.org. And Christina just put all of those links into the chat. And I, I suggest you save the chat or click on the links that you're interested in open in your browser now so that you can go back and check them out later. If you need help accessing any of these sites, please email us. And finally, if you'd like to hang out and talk with us in our virtual parking lot, we'll be staying on for another 15 minutes to answer any questions that may have come up for you. Thank you again for being with us tonight to help complete the Community Wildfire Protection Plan to prepare Sonoma County communities for wildfire. Good night.